So it's crazy to me, the 2021 MacBook Pros are officially two years old. How has time flown by that fast? It feels like we just got these new Macs, but anyways, now that these have been replaced by two new generations of MacBooks, this has made the M1 models terrific value in 2023. So let's talk about this. So if you go on Amazon and eBay, you will notice the absolute base model 14 inch, which is the one I'll be mainly focused on, has dropped to around $1,300 or 1,300 pounds, which is much cheaper than the M3 models, and you're really not missing out on much. And by the way, would like to remind you guys, like this video and subscribe for more content like this, it would be appreciated. So let's begin with the design, and well, this looks exactly the same as the current models. This was a generation that got the major redesign with a notch, and the larger function row, and obviously Apple tends to redesign their Macs every five years, so two years later, this design is still very much in circulation, but honestly, I'm not complaining because this still feels like peak MacBook design. I really can't fault anything here, and yes, I know some are gonna complain about the humongous notch, but it's a non-issue in my opinion. I usually forget it's there, so I truly believe this design is perfect, especially compared to the M1 model's predecessor that of course had the annoying touch bar and also the lack of ports. And let's talk about ports because the selection of peripherals here is absolutely awesome. In fact, much like the design, this also has not changed with newer models. You get two Thunderbolt 4 ports on the left with MagSafe and also one Thunderbolt port on the right, an SD card reader and also a HDMI 2.0 port. That is something to note because HDMI 2.0 only supports a single 4K 60Hz panel, but HDMI 2.1 on the newer Max supports 8K 60Hz panels and 4K displays up to a refresh rate of 240Hz. Now, I'll be honest guys, this does not bother me, especially since you have Thunderbolt 4 boards, which can support two external displays up to 6K resolution at 60Hz, so I feel like most can look past the limitations of the HDMI ports. Moving on to performance, the base M1 Pro has eight CPU cores with a split of six performance and two efficiency cores, as well as 14 GPU cores. And there's really not much for me to say here because surprise, surprise, Apple Silicon is still great. I've been personally using the M1 MacBook Air for the last three years, and I've yet to have any performance issues. So coming to the M1 Pro, it flies through anything I throw at it. Obviously, I've been mainly editing videos. I don't do many fancy edits, but regardless, there's been no slowdowns. I also don't play games very often with my Mac, so I don't care about hardware ray tracing or dynamic caching the M3 models offer for my use. M1 Pro is more than fine. In fact, what's more important for me is having the headroom in terms of RAM, and so a big reason why I would prefer buying the M1 Pro or the M2 Pro Mac over the M3 is because those machines get 16 gigs of RAM as standards. Now, 8 gigs was fine for the most part, and I really did not pick up on the M3 slowing down when I was testing it, but I don't think that's always going to be the case. You see, as the machine gets older and it becomes more taxing for the machine to run new versions of applications, I am very sure 8 gigs of RAM is going to become a bit of an issue. So yes, while it's fine for most right now, having a machine with 16 gigs of RAM is going to benefit you in the long run. And well, that's something M1 Pro comes with as standards for much less than the M3 MacBook Pro. The display on this still is one of, if not the best display on a laptop right now. It's basically the same panel you get on the current models. So it's a 120Hz mini LED panel with True Tone and P3 supports, and it looks incredible, guys. Now, yes, I know the new models have 600 nits of brightness when watching SDR content compared to 500 nits on this, but do remember there are apps that can unlock the full 1000 nits of brightness. These displays can produce, so ultimately, don't be pissed off by the M1 Pro because of this. If you watch a lot of movies and TV shows on your MacBook, this display is still perfect and it's a joy to use. Now with the webcam, I'll be honest, I see many gas up the quality of the sensor on these new Macs, but I actually can't tell much of a difference between the 1080p FaceTime camera on this and the 720p FaceTime camera on the M1 MacBook Air. At the end of the day, it's a small sensor tucked behind a screen, and so I would suggest using your iPhone via continuity camera instead, or of course, just plug in an actual camera. It's very easy to do this, and both of these will give you much better footage than the webcam, but I guess the built-in webcam is nice to have for the occasional zoom call. The speakers on this blow my mind because they have so much bass and volume for laptop speakers, and I just can't comprehend that such a small machine has speakers that are this good. Apple's clearly the leader in this aspect. The mics are also great, 
And here's a webcam and mic test for you guys on this MacBook. Let me know how this sounds. The keyboard is also very, very nice to use. The trackpad is perfection. It's nice and large. And every time I use a Mac, I come to appreciate how incredible Apple's trackpads are because when I used to use Windows laptops, that was the one thing that sucked consistently in all of them. And it seems Apple's really the only manufacturer that can nail this part of the laptop experience. Touch ID has also been reliable and it's rapid. Connectivity wise, you get Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth 5, which aren't the latest specs, but I'll be honest, I've had zero issues. It's all been rock solid. The endurance has also been fine. Now I do wanna mention this is a third party refurbished device. And so the battery inside is not brand new. And so as a result, I've picked up on this losing around 25% of battery life once I finish editing for two hours, which is worse than the newer models, but that's still more than fine for most at the end of the day. And what's crazy is that this is the worst performing Mac when it comes to endurance, but it still probably destroys many Windows machines on the market two years later. However, I do wanna emphasize, if you're buying from a third party refurb seller or you're going used, make sure to inquire about the battery health and of course, how many cycles the battery has gone through because overall battery life is gonna depend on that. I think that's the biggest plus of going Apple certified refurbish because those models usually have brand new batteries, but unfortunately 14 inch M1 Pros have not been in stock for months. So I had to go with a third party seller for this review. Thankfully, the condition of the machine is excellent. And if you're really worried about how the condition of a used or refurbished model could be, I think that's another reason you should consider Apple refurbished if possible, because in my experience, everything I've gotten from them has been pristine. And I'm hoping the UK site does get more 14 inch M1 Pros. Although I do wanna mention, you might still be able to find brand new sealed models on clearance by third parties. I've seen a few listings on hot UK deals. So wherever you're based, definitely look around because a third party retailer could have these brand new. But so Overall guys, for the price, I often see this MacBook at. It's a no brainer for me to recommend this. Ultimately, the M2 and M3 models are very, very similar to this. And yes, they might offer decent performance upgrades, but it's not substantial enough to pay the premium for those especially when the M1 Pro offers 95% of the same experience. Yes, some of you might be wary of buying a Mac that's already two years old. What does that mean for support? But considering there was so much headroom with these Apple Silicon Macs from day one, I could see these getting a decade's worth of support. And so that's still seven or eight years left of macOS updates. And so these should be more than fine for long-term usage. Anyways, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Make sure to like and subscribe for more content like this. And thank you for watching.